Ladies and gents, it's that time of the year. The greatest league in the world is back and I'm here to predict it. The Premier League, yes. I'm a bit late to the party, but hey, better late than ever. And just so you know, I'm recording this before game week two. So please go easy on me down in the comments. I'll be starting from the bottom, working my way to the top, where I'll reveal my champions. I'll explain why I placed each team where they are, and I'm sure you'll have your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're as excited as I am for the 24-25 season, there's plenty more content coming your way. So make sure you do subscribe if you do enjoy. Let's get into it. 20th place, Leicester City. I genuinely feel for Leicester fans. I'm not sure they fully grasp the tough situation they're in right now. The team is in desperate need of a rebuild. But with their current plan, it looks like they're headed down for relegation. And this time, it could be a much longer stay in the championship. The potential points deduction if it happens will only make their situation worse with the loss of their best player a new system to adapt to and their manager moving to Chelsea the odds are stacked against them Steve Cooper will do his best to rally the team but without major changes or signings Leicester may find themselves stuck at the bottom with a long road back to the Premier League. 19th, Southampton. Southampton will struggle in the Premier League this season, especially considering how poor their defence was in the Championship. Even though they've made some new signings, it looks like they'll stick to their style of keeping possession. While this approach has some positives, it won't be enough to fix their defensive issues. The team does have some good players like Armstrong and Downs, but beyond these, the squad lacks depth and overall quality. This lack of strong backup players could become a big problem, especially if injuries are suspensions occur during the season scoring goals is a major concern for Southampton if they can't consistently find the back of the net they'll be in real danger of going down without a reliable goal scorer their chances of staying in the league looks slim this issue was highlighted in their most recent match against Newcastle where despite having 19 shots and five on target they still lost even after playing against 10 men for over 60 minutes not good. 18th, Ipswich Town. Ipswich Town are back in the Premier League and start the season with Kieran McKenna as their manager, a coach who gained a lot of attention over the summer. Big clubs like Manchester United and Chelsea were rumoured to be interested in him, showing just how well he's done with Ipswich. McKenna's skills and leadership are key for the team. The club has made some smart signings this season. McKenna is good at adjusting his tactics, which will help Ipswich face different challenges throughout the season. However, there are some concerns about their attack. The lap needs to improve. He can consistently score goals. If he struggles, it could be a major problem for Ipswich. Despite McKenna's abilities, Ipswich might still find themselves battling to stay out of the relegation zone as the season goes on. 17th, Brentford. Thomas Frank is a true Brentford legend, having led the team through an incredible journey, but it seems like his time at the club might be coming to an end. While he has done a fantastic job, it's hard to see him staying in charge until next season. The situation with Ivan Tony is also critical. As I record this video right now, there are talks of Tony heading to Saudi, and that makes me sad, so I can imagine the Brentford fans. Tony staying at the club would be a massive help for Brentford, giving them the firepower they need to stay competitive. However, even if he stays for now, there's a good, good chance he could leave by the summer, which would be a big loss for the team. Brentford's home form will be vital this season. Winning games at home will likely determine whether they can stay in the Premier League. They've already made a strong start securing a 2-1 win against Crystal Palace last week, which is a positive sign, but they'll need to keep up that level of performance if they want to avoid relegation. 16th, Nottingham Forest. Notts Forest squad does have some impressive quality, but their defence is a real concern for me. While Milenkovic is a solid defender, the overall defensive setup lacks the strength needed to consistently hold off Premier League attacks. This could be a significant issue in crucial matches against teams also fighting to avoid relegation. Now, despite these concerns, I think Alanga has the potential to have a strong season, top player. In the end, I think their quality and attacking strength will help them avoid relegation. 15th, Everton. Everton had a rough start to the season with a disappointing loss at home to Brighton last week. However, they have a manager who is known for his ability to keep teams in the Premier League and the squad is committed. The team has a lot of good players and are generally solid defensively, which will help them throughout the season. One area of concern is their consistency in attack, their lack of dependable goal scorer, which might make it challenging for them to score consistently. Despite this, I believe Everton will still perform well and manage to secure 
enough points to stay in the Premier League. 14th, Wolves. Wolves often don't get much attention in pre-season predictions and this year is no different. However, their squad has taken a huge hit this summer, which might affect their performance. Losing key players like Neto to Chelsea and Kilman is a significant blow and it could weaken their overall team. Despite these setbacks, I have a lot of confidence in their manager, O'Neill. His skills and experience are highly valued, and I believe he will be able to guide the team through these challenges. Thanks to his leadership, I think Wolves will manage to hold their own in the Premier League this season. While they may face some difficulties, O'Neill's expertise should be enough to keep them safe and secure a mid-table finish. 13th, Crystal Palace. Palace have a strong starting 11 with some talented players who can compete well in the Premier League. However, it's clear that their squad lacks depth and quality beyond the first choice players. For instance, the drop in quality from someone like Gehi to a backup like Holding is quite noticeable and could be a problem if injuries or suspensions occur. There also seems to be a lack of ambition from the club's higher ups, which might affect how the team performs on the pitch. If the club's leadership isn't fully committed to pushing the team forward, it could show in their results. One key player for Palace will be Mateta. His consistency and ability to score goals will be crucial for the team's success this season. If he can perform reliably, and contribute to the attack, Palace should be able to manage a mid-table finish. 12th, Bournemouth. Bournemouth will definitely miss Solanke, who was a key player for them last season. However, I believe they will manage to maintain their strength and stay competitive this season. Despite the loss, the team has made some promising additions. Sinistera is a fantastic signing and should bring a lot of quality to the squad. Additionally, Areola has shown that he is a capable manager and his expertise will be valuable in guiding the team through the season. Another player to watch is Clivert, who has the potential to make a significant impact with his exciting style of play. Overall, while losing Solanke as a setback, the new signings and the strong management should help Bournemouth stay solid and secure a respectable finish in the league. 11th, Fulham. Fulham is the perfect example of a mid-table team. They have some strong performances but can also be inconsistent at times. Marco Silva is an excellent manager, I rate him highly. And the team has made some good additions this season with ESR and Anderson joining the squad. Despite these improvements, I think Fulham will continue to struggle with inconsistency. As a great Italian once said, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. This up and down form might keep them around the mid table area. However, if they can get things right and build on their new signings, they could potentially finish higher. 10th, Brighton. Brighton are shaping up to be a really lively and exciting team this season. Their pre-season performances have looked promising under their young manager, Herseler, who is just 31 years old. One of their standout moves has been signing Minta, who is a fantastic addition. Another major signing is Waver, who has been one of the biggest signings of the summer. However, there will be concerns about whether the young manager can keep things consistent and adapt as needed throughout the season. If Brighton can keep up their energy and find the right balance, they could end up with a strong finish in the top half of the table. Ninth, West Ham. Predicting West Ham's season is tricky, parting ways with Moyes, was a bold move by the board, but I'm impressed with their choice of Lopetegui as his replacement. He brings a lot of experience to the job. The team has also had a strong transfer window, bringing in some excellent additions. Kilman, Wan-Bissaka from United, Somerville and Fulkrug are all solid additions who should improve the squad significantly. If these new signings gel well with the existing team, West Ham could have a successful season. Eight, Aston Villa. Aston Villa will be juggling the demands of European football this season, which means they might not perform at the same high level every week as they did last season. The main question is, how much their performance will drop off due to this added pressure. I think they'll experience some inconsistency which could hold them back. Despite this, Villa have a strong squad and should still manage to secure a solid finish, but the challenge of balancing domestic and European commitments will prevent them from reaching their previous heights. Seventh, Manchester United. United will finish seventh this season for several reasons. First, the team struggles with being clinical in front of goal they often miss key chances when they arise their midfield isn't well balanced even gaps and lacking creativity which affects their ability to control games defensively the team has a tendency to switch off leading to costly mistakes they need more in both midfield and attack because relying on Hoyland and Xerxes 
alone might not just be enough. Some experienced additions would help strengthen these areas. Rashford in particular needs to be given a break. He hasn't been benched for a while and could benefit from rediscovering his form. Additionally, the club should consider selling Sancho and McTominay during this transfer window to make space and funds for new signings. Ten Hag is still making some puzzling decisions during matches which will impact the team's performance. Sixth, Newcastle. Newcastle had a tough time adjusting to Champions League football last season and were hit by hard injuries and Tonali's suspension. Despite these challenges, they have a strong team and if they manage to sign Gehi, it'll become even more difficult to beat. Their performances at St. James's Park are crucial as maintaining strong home form will be key to their success this season. If they can stay healthy and make the most of their home games, Newcastle has the potential to finish in the top six. Fifth, Liverpool. A major drop-off is expected for Liverpool with Klopp's era winding down. The team is likely to face a tough transition. The squad is ageing and they haven't been linked with any significant signings to refresh the lineup. This situation feels similar to when Ferguson left, leading to a difficult season under Moyes. I think Liverpool might struggle to even stay in the top six, to be honest, as the challenges of rebuilding become more apparent. Fourth, Tottenham. Tottenham had a strong summer giving Ange a good chance to build on last season. They now have plenty of attacking option with players like Son, Solanke, Solomon, Kulazeski, Werner and Richarlison. Being able to rotate these players will be a big boost and should help them have a successful season. Since Pochettino left, Tottenham have struggled to find their form, but this year they look ready to make a serious push while they might just miss out on top four, if Solanke can score 20 to 25 goals, they could potentially break into those top spots. Overall, Spurs seem set for a much improved season and have a real chance to challenge for a Champions League place. Third, Chelsea. Chelsea's squad depth this season is outstanding. Whoa. Making it hard not to see them finishing in the top four, to be honest. If they can keep their key players healthy and improve their defence, they have potential to do really well. Lavia is like a new signing for them, having missed most of last season due to injury. His return will be a big boost for the team. If Chelsea manages to sign Osman, I might have to reconsider this ranking and move them even higher. His addition could make a huge difference and strengthen their chances of success. With all these factors, Chelsea could be in for a fantastic season. Second, Arsenal. Arsenal is an elite team with excellent depth, making them a strong contender this season. However, I believe they still need a 20 to 25 goal, a seasoned striker to truly challenge City for the top spot. They don't have enough rootless finishers in front of goal and that will hurt them in key moments. Additionally, in high pressure situations, Arteta tends to overthink which can lead to mistakes that cost Arsenal valuable points. While they're a top team, these factors will hold them back from overtaking City and claiming the title. First, Man City. <laughs> Manchester City is a step above everyone else. Simple. They have the best manager, the best players and the best staff in the league. City has proven time and time again they know how to win and it would be foolish of us all to think they won't do it again this season. Five in a row is on.